Hi guys, how are you all? Okay, uh, today we're doing a, a little bit of a, a complement, uh, not a complement, a continuation session. I mean, the last session that I was doing with you, uh, we had uh, some technical problems and uh, so we're doing this session in uh, replacement to it. Uh, I usually, uh, in the sessions that I am with you guys, I will try to trade, take some live trades. So right now it is uh, 10 o'clock Eastern time or 10 o'clock, so it's already about two hours in the uh, in the trading session. So anyway, I took one of the trades this morning and the position that I have right now, as you can see, I have the, uh, the pound cad, I'm long the pound cad. And uh, I, will, I will explain to you some of the reasons that uh, we have I'm taking the uh, the pound cad. Primarily, uh, I'm just gonna no, I'm gonna leave the the amount here so that you can see what I'm doing. Uh, uh, primarily. Uh, when we did our okay i will will discuss the uh, the the intervention in a minute uh, coco uh the idea behind uh, the the trade is as follows now if you can see we uh, the if you look at the the pound yen the pound dollar if you will you can see, I mean, one of our structure points that we have, we usually identify. I mean, most of my work or most of my trade plans uh, or most of the trades that I take, actually pr pr practically 100% of the trades that I take, is based upon uh, the structure, the identifying the market condition, knowing where I am at within the, the market. So, like Chris was saying uh, a while back, you just cannot go and buy support and resistance every time you can presume that there is support and resistance. Uh, there are certain times when it's prudent to buy support and resistance, and there are some times that's absolutely ridiculous and moronic to actually go and buy support and sell resistance. It's, it's, again, this all depends on the, the market condition that you're in. And there are some times where you have to buy support, and there are some times where you have to sell support. You cannot trade the, the market the same way 24 hours a day, seven days a week. It's just not. Uh, so in this case, what we try to do every week is to identify first the market condition, what state of mind the traders are in. Are they in buying mode, selling mode, or, uh, are they trending, whatever. So I understand where, uh, the market condition. Two, I begin to pinpoint my entry points, whether it is a what we call a significant point, a structural point, a flipping point, all those points which are which gives me the odds, but puts the uh, gives me the high probability trade, gives me the path of least resistance, gives me the ability to be on the right side of the market and to stay with the trade long enough in order to capture the uh, the largest amount of money or the to maximize my profit on the trade uh, and based on that if you look now at the pound dollar we do have primarily if you can see at least from the beginning of april the market has been pushing higher again we're having like a short term or an intermediate upward trend it's not a, a trend change as far as the big picture but the, you can see that we're having setting up higher lows and it's breaking up to the upside, breaking above the, the 150.980, which as you can see right here is a, a very important structural point. And it has been holding around it now for the last, from the beginning of 2011, if you can see from the latter part of 2011. Now, once we broke above from here last week, breaking and holding above the 159.80, now my complete bias is to the upside with regards to the pound and I'm buying the pound until I have a signal or a reason that I should be trading the pound on the uh, short side. Uh, with that, 
I look now at what we call the weakest currency. We, one of the things that we do also every week, and this is something I would like to share with you today, and I think it would be something uh, prudent for all of those uh, guys that want to be trading uh, foreign exchange, is to look at what we call the strongest currencies versus the weakest currencies, okay? The strongest currency, why do we look at strength or weakness? Why do we identify? Uh, just allow me a second. Uh, Coco, Moss, uh, I'd be more than happy, more than happy to answer all your questions, okay? If you would give me, let me finish this point, hold on your questions and type it in. So just give me, tell me, I will say anybody has a question, I'll be more than happy to answer it. But all this stuff, I mean, I'm doing all this stuff for you live, so I don't want to, uh, sometimes I get distracted or something, so I'll be more than happy. So just try, give me two minutes. So anyway, what we do is that we try to identify what we call the, what, okay, we, we try to look for the strongest currencies and we try to sell the weakest currencies. I'm not looking at the dollar cat per se. I'm not looking at the dollar Swiss per se. I am not looking exactly. Makes no sense. So maybe if you wait and you might learn something. So you're looking at the strongest of the currency itself and you're trying to find the, the, the currency pair, the currency, not the pair, the currency that is weak and that will be your primary choice. So you create the hierarchy of what you want to buy and what you want to sell and based on that hierarchy you decide, okay, I'm, I'm going to focus on this specific pair. The way I do that is every Friday we go to what we call the indices. And in these indices, I'm looking at the currency index. I'm looking, for example, at the euro index, which is the basket of all the, the euros versus all the other currencies. So it is a standalone euro, which is against a basket of currencies. So I can gauge the strength of the euro or the that specific country. For example, the same thing with the yen, the index of the yen. I'm looking for the yen as a whole. I'm looking at the Swiss franc also as a whole. And then what we do, we gauge, for example, the, the strength. So as you see, this is what we do. Yes, of course, we do gold. But this is a, I want to show you this because this is something you can, I hope you can use and at least I'm sharing with you something that's not a moving average, it's not an indicator, it is a methodology, a way of doing things. So what you do is that we create a hierarchy. So we look at the charts, and I'm looking at the indices, and we say which is the strongest pairs, and we give them, I give them like a marking. So for example, the Swiss now is three pluses, so this means that the Swiss is very strong. And this is not last week, but in, in general, uh, if the pound is, uh, if the euro is stronger than the uh, the Swiss, so I'm going to give it, let's say, uh, four pluses. So I mean, this means that the euro is stronger than the Swiss. It doesn't. I mean, you can look at the weekly. You can look whatever you want. Again, there are techniques and ways, and this is how I train you guys, and I train the guys to understand strength and weakness and how to see it on the chart and. The idea is this, think about, let's say that this is the Australian dollar, for example, and it is going up, and this is the index, the dollar index, let's say, and you can see it is coming down. This is the picture of the dollar index. So now you see that the dollar index is coming down, it is kind of weak, and if I put, let me insert them, uh, put another chart over here. I'm going to put, let's say, the, uh, let's say the, the Swiss franc is good. Oh, look, it doesn't work. This way, hold on a second. One second, gentlemen, one second, ladies and gentlemen. So the idea is, when I do that, when I look at the strength, 
and I look at the weakness. So now th I want you to take a mental picture of this, guys. Now this thing is coming down like this. And let me put another chart here. That would be easier. This is how you can best trade foreign exchange. And this is how you can maximize your gain. I mean, we do it. I'm showing you a way, a simple way to do it right now. And this is how you do your work. So first of all, both of them have to be on the same time frame. Both of them have to be equal time frame so that you are comparing apples to apples and oranges to oranges. Okay. Uh, so let's put this on a weekly, let's say. And I'm putting weekly so that you can see it. Can you see both charts, guys? Oops. Hold on a second. Okay, so uh, let's make this weekly. And again, what I'm doing here, I'm not taking trade. I am gauging strength or weakness. Okay? So with this way, if you look here, for example, this is the Swiss versus the dollar. And this is how we trade. This is how we trade here in Training Traders. This is how I trade. This is how we do our trade planning session and to make our trades. So, for example, here, right there, that was on June the 4th, 2010. You can see that that was the bottom of the Swiss franc move, and that was the top of the U.S. dollar. And right now, if you would have bought, hypothetically speaking, of course, if you would have bought it over here, the Swiss, and you went short, over here, the dollar, oops, then you are making, every time the doll, the Swiss goes up one point, the dollar comes down, like this, and you can see that the distance now between the Swiss going up and the dollar coming down, this is how you maximize your profit. So now uh, that's why we gauge. It's so important to gauge the strength and the weakness of the instruments that you are trading. There are specific ways. We don't use indicators. That don't use. We follow specific rules, price structure, all that. But you can visualize now that if you can consider that your trade has been from here, and now this is like your trend line, if you will, and this is your short trade in the dollar from here, you can see that the distance between both is now expanding, and therefore, you will be making a great deal of money on that pair. This changes every week. This is not constant. I mean, this, there are, as you can see, there are a lot of fluctuations intraday, or uh, intraweek, or if you're using daily, and so forth. But, and therefore, that's why it is imperative that we do that every Friday. We do it every Saturday. You do that every week so that you can identify the events of what is going to happen in the coming. That's why, for example, I have a position, the pound cat. So if I put here the pound, that's the British pound. And you can see that it's beginning to push up. That's the index for the pound. And I put here the index for the CAD. You can see that the CAD is beginning to decline. It's beginning the move to the downside. And that is beginning to the move to the upside. And therefore, and therefore, I will be focusing on that trade. Uh, Abel, yes, this is the future. This is the future. The, the future is nothing more than the, it, it's a version of the spot. I mean, you have the spot, you have the forward, you have the future. What you need is a tool. It's theoretical. Well, that's the best I can do. I mean, I'm supposed to give you the... Uh, uh, so the idea is now you have a general direction or a general bias on how you want to align yourself. What is the high probability? direction that you want to be taking and then you move the index for the pound or the index for the dollar is the index is the pound it's not going to change it's one and the same then you can go 
to your daily chart like this for example you identify your turning points your flipping points your structure points uh, send me an email uh, JB anybody that wants those indexes send me an email to uh, and I will be happy or call the office uh, some of the guys will uh, you can ask call the office and they will uh, you can call the office, they will tell you how, I mean, there are several sources that we can get, the, uh, they will give it to you, there's no nothing, no problem, we'll be more than happy to do that. Uh, yes, you want to take the stuff so that you can program it. What do you think I am? So anyway, guys, uh, so the idea is you identify these points, you know which way you want to align yourself, and based on that, these are, you take the trades and uh, you decide which side of the market you are going to be trading, okay? Guys, what's your question? Structure point. Yes, you take your, the, the structure point is a price point. You have to take at least from the daily chart at a minimum. Uh, you have to take it from the daily chart. Uh, because you're trying to identify a... there are different points and not all points are the same so uh, there is what we call a structure point and there is a flipping point and there is a significant point these are all uh, points of reference on a different hierarchy uh, and you are looking at these points so that you can use them into the trade. So the the 159.80, uh, for example, uh, the 159.80. Why do I say it is very important? Okay, the the 159.80 has been one of the points that the market has been respecting for a very 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 long time. Uh, So anyway, guys, uh, looking at the, uh, the the structure point of 159.80, you can see that this is one of the price points that the market has been respecting. At least, if you want to go back to the October, uh, let's say 2009, this market has been it has been a moment of breakout. You can see the behavior of the price below it. What we are trying to do is to identify, as I said, these structure points. And a structure point, the importance for it to us is that it is a decision-making point. Uh, for example, I mean, one, I mean, if you take a look at this chart, guys, uh, I want to show you something. This is how we identify the structure of failure. I, I still, if he needs help, or Osama, if he needs help, I'm more than happy to send you some information as long as Okay, guys. Now let's. Uh, no, I can show you the the trade the, the 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 trade that we did. Okay, let me show you the trade the, the the that trade. That's nice. Okay, take a look at the and I will explain that trade to you in sequence. Okay, and then I will show you the trade and I will explain it to you from the beginning to the end. It's, I think it's a, it's a. Here is one of the. Uh, this is the. This is the trade of the euro yen, and I will show you, for example, this is before the intervention. Uh, as you all know, that one of the structure points that we have is the 110.56, and I will come back and say the, the, the 158 ending. Uh, but at least I just want to distract my head, and then I'll come back to the do the, the, the pound. Okay, so right now we're looking at the prices came back and traded. As you see, this is the day of the intervention. And the way we plan our trades and the way we identify the trades, we take all these structure points. And any of you guys, when you come in, we identify these structure points. So I have a structure point here of 110.56. I have also... You can see here the 113.60. Let me space it so that you can see it. 
is the, the 113.6.0. And there is a, anyway, we have two structures point here, which is the 113.6.0 and the 113.4.0. Okay, these are two major structural points. So on the day of the intervention, on the day of the intervention, the price is traded below the 110.56. And at that moment in time, we did not care if there were, I mean, the, uh, the rule is once it breaks the structure point, we are going to initiate the short. And the moment you take the short, what you do is that structural point becomes your stop and reverse. And the reason it becomes a stop and reverse, this is the only time when you use stop and reverse technique. So once it traded below the 115, the 11056, we took the trade and we went short and we, I'll show you how we managed the trade on the downside. Now it came back and as you see, it's been coming back all the way from the 107, all the way back up. All this distance here, I wouldn't be encouraged to buy it. I would be actually scared to buy it because now I know that we had a capitulation of four, 500 pips to the downside. The market is, uh, the Bank of Japan is intervening. It is coming down. So I am not going to stand in front of the, uh, I mean, the, the Bank of Japan hasn't intervened yet, but there probably will be uh, an intervention that is something out of the, uh, the, the norm. So I need to be careful. So what we have done, the moment it says if it gets above the 150, the 11056, if it reverses above the structural point, this is the time when you take a, you reverse and you turn your short into a buy. So, and what we do, you take all these structural points, these values. So if you see, for example, on my daily chart, you see that I have a line here that indicates the 11056. I have a, a line that indicates every structural point that we identify. And I take these lines, you got 11360 and the 11339. I take all these values and I put them on my intraday chart. So, for example, as you see here, I have a line that indicates the 11056. And this is how I trade every single day is that every, this is how I make my trading decision. So my, right there, as you see, this is my structural point. This is where we were trading. Let me take the, uh, I'll reverse the, the value, but at least now you can see what I'm talking about. And now you can see now, you, you see, this is the capitulation below the 110.56. And that was the short. And as soon as it comes back here, you begin to close the trade. So this is only the amount of profit that one could have made unless you closed it. Uh... Yes, I'm going to come back to that, Coke in a second. And that's why I'm answering this. And then I'm going to go and answer Andy's question about the fund. Now, as soon as you see this, I am not going to buy. I mean, I'm not going to reverse because, I, yes, I know that there is possible intervention. The Bank of Japan is going to intervene. Yes, I want to be a buyer, but I want to buy only when the price goes above the structure point. So this was the first attempt. I mean, this is what we were looking at. And, of course, once we, um, we had this capitulation, we had to look looking for the price point, the structure point where the Bank of Japan is going to intervene. And my only reference is, yes, this is the euro yen, yes. My only reference is now the structure point, which is the 11056. So the first attempt to go beyond the structure point, you shouldn't be a buyer. You just have to wait for a confirmation that it has actually went above the structural point and it is holding. You want it to be to do like this. You want it to come. This is what you're looking for. 
You want it to come above the structure, coming from down up. If this is your structure point, you want it to come above the structure point, like this, and then to come back to the structure point and pause. So you're looking for this kind of a, an inverted V kind of a pattern, especially when a situation like an intervention like this. Okay? So this is now the first penetration, So and then it failed. So I'm not buying this anyway. I'm waiting for it. If it stood here by the 1050, I would be looking at buying. Exactly. I mean, so just hold a second, Coco. I'll come. So anyway, th this is intervention. The, you, you have to create hierarchy. We have 21 different setups, Coco. So now it broke down. I'm still... Uh, now I know I'm not going to be a buyer. And you can see now it got into the... And right there, this is the second break above the significant point. And... That now it is respecting the significant point and it's holding it. And now it is pushing higher. So where do you think I should buy it? Somewhere around here, according to the rules, somewhere around here. And this is the trade. I'll show you the entry exactly. Right there. That was the trade. We bought, I mean, the, the structure was 110. Uh, 56. I made sure I bought it around 77. And I took it. Now I know I have now the Bank of Japan behind my back. I know that the Bank of Japan is, ho is now coming into the market because it, they were able to reverse above. This is the euro yen. Um, they were able to reverse the, the prices above the structural point. And I stayed with the trade. All this, now I'm, I'm sitting into this trade, all, I'm making all this money. Now the question is, should I go out here? Should I take profit? I mean, I bought it at 110.50, now it's at 113, I'm up 150 pips. Should I take profit? Okay? So, no, the rule is, now I don't have a structural failure, I don't have a trend change. All what I have is a trend, I'm staying with the trade, I'm, even though it stands by, I'm staying with the trade, I'm letting it I'm let, these are the trades that you are waiting. Exactly. That's why you want to stay with it. That's why you want to stay with it. You stay with it. You stay with it. You stay with it. You stay with it. Let me take off these dates off. You stay with them as long as you're getting paid, as long as it's not giving you any signal to get out. Right there, that was my first reversal signal. And this is where I closed the trade. I closed it at 114. So that was on every single one of them, there was a 500 pair, 500 pips. The actual uh, per pair, so that's 1,500 pips just on. And this is how you trade. So you identify the market condition. You know what's happening in the market. You use your... Uh... No, this has nothing to do with the opening range. Uh... Coco, because you can see there are multiple opening ranges over here. You have, you cannot buy, I mean, the way we trade is not just the opening range. The opening range is the, 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 the smallest thing of what we do. This is the, uh, it's just the, the beginning of the way we trade. It's not how we trade. I mean, it's one of the components of one, we have 21 different setups, and this is primarily one of them. And basically that is, I mean, you can see the trade, the blue dashed blue lines that you see there. This is the beginning of the trade, and that is the end of the trade. The, the structural point, uh, in the case of the euro yen, this is where the we were able to identify the intervention, the Bank of Japan's intervention. A structural point is, you can consider that a major point of decision. And this, there are rules to identify this. It's, it's a little bit beyond the, uh, the scope of, I mean, 
but this is part of the the, the, the the teaching that we train and the training that we do. So it takes a little bit. There are many rules to, to identify the price point. And then once you identify the price point, let's say the 11056, you either decide based upon the rules, whether it is a structure point, whether it is a significant point, or whether it is a, uh, a flipping point. In any case, any of you guys, I mean, this is how we do it. So at least you, you don't have, I'm not saying this, that you have to take the course. You, you're very welcome. All what you have to do is if you come and share, sit with us in the trend, in the trade planning session, this is what we do every week. We plan for you. We identify together the, the long point. This is the point where it was uh, three minutes. So the average was like 550 per, per, per lot. But a pip is a pip is a pip. I mean, I could have made equally a million three on it if I had like uh, 10 contracts. Everything that we do, Lindy, is uh, a point, whatever you're, you're taking a point is a point. Uh, so... I could have taken one unit or I could say we trade when you trade, you trade by the unit. Uh, the way this is how we trade here, we trade by the unit. We don't trade by the contract. We trade by the unit. So let me answer that later. So what we do again, guys, the guys are asking about the structure points. What we do, we identify a long point. Uh, a long point is where we're going to initiate a buy. A structure long, this is now the very strong uh, yes, sir. I will tell you, Copen sir. The structural point. This is where now you're going to really, really focus your trading decision. That that is definitely something you want to be in. Sometimes the structure point and the long point are one and the same. So let me show you, for example, a specific situation. For example, here. Look at this here. The short point is one th in the euro yen. The short point is 113.60. The structure point is 113.60. So my short point and my structure short is one and the same. So this means what? This means if the euro yen comes and trades below 113.6, I'm going to smash it down. Instead of taking three units on the way up, I would take five units on the way down. Why? Because the hierarchy of this trade is much more important. It is where multiple entry points have come together, and now I have more decisions to make, and now I'm going to take the trade into that direction. Okay? And you can get a copy of a JPEG of uh, this, or we can, we usually send it to the guys, uh, and you take these numbers, you enter them on your trading chart. So on, if, for example, if you're taking the pound CAD, or well, let's take the, the pound dollar, for example, so I can go back to the 159.80. So, uh, Andy, I think Andy was asking about the, the pound dollar, the 159.80. Now take a look here. My structural short point in the pound dollar is the 159.80. This means what? This means that if the pound dollar comes and trades below the 159.80, that would indicate that the market has been reversed and we are going to take... Yes, we identify the stops. We put the long stop and we put the short stop. This is how we plan our trades before every week. All our trades are planned the week before. Okay. And we are planning where we're going to go in long. Where are we going to go? What if, where I'm going, if I go long, where am I placing my stop? If I'm going to go short, where am I going to place my short, my short stop? Everything is done so that, and all our traders have take these numbers and they put these numbers on their charts. You can see that, for example, right now when you see this, what does it say? 162.98, right? This means what? We are only going to sell it if it trades below 169, 162.98. Let me show you, for example, the euro dollar, how we do it. I mean, this is how. So 
So for example here, this is how I would put, so this is my short stop. I'm going to close this. This is running a little bit too much. So this is now, if I go short, this is S means short. So I'm going short over here. And this is my where I'm placing my short stop. So now you place your line, and now you can see, okay, now 140, this is what I'm taking the short. Then, yes, you can put these prices manually. We do the work. And you can do it, uh, you can use it manually. I mean, I don't want, I mean, I'm not doing this to, if you can use it uh, for your benefit and make money about it, I'm more than happy. Well, yes, it's a big stop genius. Uh, the size of the stop differs. Not all stops are created equal. Okay. Uh, let me explain that. This is very important. Not all stops are created equal. Yes, you need to be technical. Why? Uh, let me show you something here again. Let's say uh, I'm using, uh, these are all our trades on this. Okay, so let's say this is a, a 200 tick chart. Okay, and let's say uh, that genius, you want to, how many pips do you like to use average? What's your average uh, pip stop, uh, James? Or you guys, anybody, what's your average pip stop? What would you like? 25? Okay, somebody says 25, somebody says 60, 80, Leon says 50. Let's say 40. Let's take an average 40 ballpark. Now, I want you to look at this chart. I'm going to show you something. Take a look at this chart. Here, there is one phase, that's the market condition. Here, this is a, another market condition. And here, there is a third market condition. You can easily see those. These are the three market conditions. You can see those clearly, right? Or as low as possible, be whatever. Now, let's say we want to use 40 pip stop. This is what we like to use. One of the easy ways to do that is you put in what's known as an average true range. Okay? And this is just a guide. I don't, it's just a guide for you guys because you, I mean, you haven't been trained yet on how to identify the structural point or the, so if you look here, okay, right here, the, the, the average true range is the average range of the last 14 bars, the distance between the last 14 bars. Okay? This is the average swing. So, if this is going nowhere, if you can see this is a sideways move, it's going nowhere, you're not making money on the way up and you're not losing money on the way down, it is going nowhere. So, you take this distance and this distance and this is the average range. So this is the minimum move. If you buy it here and you put your stop half of the minimum move, uh, Jimmy or whatever, I'm sorry your name is, if you buy it over here and you put your stop over here, you're going to be stopped out. Okay? You're going to be stopped out. All right? Uh, why? Because this is half the distance. This is half the breathing scope. Okay, if I come here in this market condition, and if you look, you, you want to find out how much is it. So right here, if you put on it, you see the average range in the bottom, it says 47.80. So if you put anything less in this sideways move, anything less than 50 pips, you might as well write a check and give it to your broker because the odds are... Uh, 100% you're going to be stopped out. If the market is moving like this and it is trending and you're making money, if you put your stop right here, your average volatility or your average move is 94 pips. So in this case, if you want to be trading the pound while it is in this kind of a behavior, you will be, you need at least anything less than 94 pips, you're going to be stopped out. 
Okay? You will be stopped out. So in this case, again, I'm not trying to, I don't want you to change anything you do. I'm just explaining something to you guys. Okay? Uh, everything that I say, if it adds to your success, all the power to you. Anything that, uh, so in this case, how can I pick my stop? You pick your stop technically. You do not pick the stop that comforts you or satisfies you financially. If I am one, only want to trade 20 pip stop, I have to find something that the average volatility of it is small so that I don't give my money away. If you want to only to trade 75 pips Dykeman, okay, uh, write a check for 75 bucks and send it to me. At least I can give you a, a something to, you know, some, we can have some nice discussion. And instead of giving your broker, uh, giving $75 to some guy that have gazillions of dollars, give it to me. <laughs> All right. Uh, you know, you, you don't have to, uh, I mean, the brokers have enough money. Eh? All right. So the idea, there are two ways to pick the stops. Okay. Uh, either you place your stop technically. Well, at least, uh, I mean, at least I'm less than the broker. At least I'm less than FXCM. Okay, so instead of, I mean, they're, they're great people. Don't get, get me wrong. I mean, they're uh, very nice people. But, I, I mean, uh, all what I'm saying is, if you guys are going to put a too tight stop, you might as well give the check to the broker and let him take it. That's all what I'm saying. Uh, so what, no, 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 no. We don't use ATRs. I'm just using the ATR to just to give you uh, an Everything that we do, uh, I don't know, market timer, is based upon chart structure, uh, market condition, and uh, knowing where to align the stop. I'll, 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 put, I'll give you a, a minute right now. Let me show you, for example, something. Take a look at this. I'll show you what I mean. So anyway, we place our stop technically. And we ident if the stop in this case is too big for you, well, okay. Decide to change, trade a different pair. Say the pound, the, the stop in the pound is too big. I'm not going to trade the pound. I'm going to trade, for example, here, like this. Take a look here in this trade, the euro yen. My short on the euro yen is 113.60. My structural short is 113.60. My stop. It's basically 113.60. It's practically zero. Uh, so, I mean, theoretically, you usually we'll put 10 pips or 15 pips. But that's it. Is. That's what risk-reward is all about, uh, genius. When I took it on the upside, my reward one, it was like 20 pips, and I made 1,500 pips. So your risk-reward is 1 to 75%. And this, in this case, if it comes below 113.60, I'm going to take the short and my risk reward is practically nothing on that trade. Only stop that I can use is something that, okay? You have to learn. I mean, you use anything that you want to use. I mean, I'm just giving you, sharing with you some suggestions and ideas. Now, as far as the stops and the stuff, I mean, I want you to take a look at this here. This is, for example, is the pound dollar, okay? Now, I want one of you guys, one volunteer, one guy. Uh, let's take, uh, okay, Leon. Okay, you, Leon. Okay. So, Leon, I want you to look at this chart. All of you guys. And I want you to tell me here, let's say, where would you like to short this? If you wanted to take a short, what would be the best place you would have chosen to take a short? Tell me, I'll move my, my mouse, tell me where to stop. Where would you like to take a short? 185, okay. Leon, okay, 159. Leon, where do you want to take a short? Leon, 170. Somebody says 195, 185. Okay, hold on, okay. So the best short 
would be somewhere around the... Uh, okay. All what I'm going to do is this. Remember, I am not formatting anything. All what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert the rules, the system, which is, again, based on the rules. No formatting, nothing. Okay, the 1900. Okay. And that's it. I'm not doing anything else. Now, the blue line indicates a winning trade. Your, this is a winning trade. So your first short is 196.47. And you close the trade at 153. That is, exact. that is the power of using price behavior, using structure. You can come anytime and, uh, well, you're very welcome. That is, and then if you look today at going long, you started buying the pound from one, from, there's your pound all the way down, and you turn around, and now you're long. We are long the pound. We started going long the pound from 152 all the way up, and right now, as we speak, we are long the pound. We are long as of today at 163. The guys will tell you. Send the, call the office, and they will tell you guys. And But the most important is, if anybody takes the course, he takes it for life. You never pay again. You can come and take the course even if you can do it a thousand times. You will attend a thousand times free. Again, because we, trading is training. We train you. We have to refresh your memory. Every, every day there is a new market condition. There is no magic pill. We train you over. So you take it and come back and take it again. And we do it. We trade with you every day. And these are the results. The software, we all pinpoint where we're going to buy and well the new turtles we are now uh interviewing the uh the the group the final group uh and hopefully uh we are going to get uh, the final 15 guys and we should be starting uh god willing uh probably uh towards the beginning of may how often? Oh, every day. I mean, we have, uh, I mean, we have a joint, uh, uh, what we call a, a global account and everybody is going to be trading and I'm basically, I'll be sitting on my desk. Uh, yeah, so, and I will know exactly what everybody is buying and selling. So the procedure, we have already three guys, uh, we have three guys already sitting in the office right here, three of the turtles, three, we have chosen three people. They are already in the office over here. They are being already part of the training, and everybody that we choose, we make him the offer. If he agrees to the terms and the condition and he signs up, he joins in, he's immediately indoctrinated, and uh, we go. So that's it, but the whole group is going to be starting, God willing, sometime by the end of April, early May. All right, guys, I think we are, uh, we're okay now, Maud. Uh, I think that's the time, guys. Okay. Thank you all very much, and I'm happy to see you. Thank you guys for your time, and thank you FX Street. And I want to thank uh, Chris also for his very, has been very gracious and kind. Uh, Chris Capra is one of the uh, fantastic guys, one of the guys you really want to enjoy. He has a lot of uh, experience, a lot of nice ideas, and uh, it was really a pleasure meeting him. Guys. So I thank you all very much, and I hope to see you soon. Take care.